Hello, everyone. We're going to give it a few minutes for some others to join. Um, but yeah, hello and welcome. Okay, I think we'll get started. Um, Yoli, are you okay to just monitor the, the participants? If anyone's trying to get in, you can yeah, let them in in the meantime. So welcome everyone um, to our oh, kicking off of our webinar series again. So I think we'd started this at the, the beginning of the year and it's kind of dropped off a little, but we're back in action. So um, this is our, our first one for the end of the year. So we're going to be uh, talking about the M Supply Tender module. Um, but first, I just want to spend like one minute quickly telling you a bit about the project where all of this is coming from. So um, it's a new centre called DTAC, or it's a very long name, the Indo-Pacific Health and Supply Chain Data and Technical Assistance Centre. And it's essentially um, a centre for health supply chain excellence across the Indo-Pacific region. So it's just been kicked off last year. Um, it's a five-year project funded through New Zealand's MFAT, and it's focused on improving health supply chains and access to essential medicines across the six Polynesian countries. So Cook Islands, Niue, Samoa, Tonga, Tokelau and Tuvalu. Um, part of our work um, involves uh, new M supply deployments as well as expanding M supply coverage across each of the countries. So by the end of the project, all of the health facilities in those countries um, will be using M supply. Um, and we're also working with the partner countries uh, to optimise their usage of M Supply. And one of the things that we're looking at uh, is the use of the M Supply Tender module. Um, some of you may also be aware of the new M Supply accreditation system, um, which is an online course for mastering the skills of M Supply. So, through a progressive um, staged manner, you can basically learn all of the, the critical um, functions of M Supply. We're also developing standardised key performance indicators and other tools for monitoring supply chain performance across the region, promoting regional collaboration and capacity building, and hoping to expand DTAC to cover um, all of the Pacific Island countries and territories, and to provide a model for expansion or a similar centre in other regions. So these may be some familiar faces to you. So there's myself, um, we've got Yolanda Chan and, and Jess who are project managers for DTAC, as well as Caroline uh, and Nancy who is based in Tonga. Um, we're also recruiting shortly for another uh, digital supply chain officer um, to be based in Samar. So today's webinar, so we're looking at the M Supply Tender module. We're gonna have a live step-by-step -step demo, um, which will be done by Yolanda. So Yolanda is one of our, our project managers uh, on this, on DTAC. Um, and she's also an experienced hospital pharmacist in Australia, and she's worked in Kiribati. So we're gonna see how to use the system and how it could help um, save you a lot of time and also provide um, the Ministry of Health with a lot of cost savings. Um, we're also going to have time for questions and answers, so please send any questions you have in the chat and we'll come back to them towards the end. And also at the end, there's going to be a poll 
So um, we're interested to know if you're thinking of using the tender module um, for any upcoming tenders. Um, and so please do let us know so we may be able to assist you with that. I'm going to leave you with a couple of email addresses. So um, if you have any other questions about DTAC or um, the tender uh, module, you can just email us at DTAC at msupply.foundation. And for any other kind of troubleshooting queries of msupply, this is our support desk email. So without further ado, I'm going to hand over the reins to Yolanda, who's going to take us through the msupply tender module. Thanks, Yolanda. Thanks, Emily. Hello, everyone. Um, it's nice to see you all here. And let me just share my screen. Let's see. All right. Can everyone see this? Yep. Thank you. All right. So, um, as as you all know, you're here for the M Supply Tender module. Um, and I'll just walk you through how the M Supply Tender module is able to assist you through your tendering process. Um, so just a quick overview for anyone who hasn't really dealt with tenders in the past. Um, the, the overall purpose of the tender is really to obtain the required items that your country needs um, at the right time, at the correct quantities and at the most favourable prices. So the ultimate goal is really to improve um, your essential medicines and consumables availability on the ground so that patients, doctors, nurses, pharmacists, um, everyone is able to access them and use them when needed. The just a really quick simplified version of the tender process because it is quite a quite an involved and complicated one. Um, this is just for but I've had to simplify it for our purposes. So um, the first step is really to prepare your item list and quantities. This can this itself is actually quite a long process um, and usually involves consulting with all the relevant stakeholders, such as doctors, public health, nurses, anyone who might be um, able to tell you about any items that might be increasing in usage or decreasing in usage due to guideline changes or um, campaigns, upcoming campaigns, which may affect your usage. It's really important to involve them from the very beginning. Uh, the next step is to set your tender conditions. And after that, you can distribute your list of items and your tender conditions to suppliers. Um, after that, you will wait for them to submit their quotes and their bids, and you can then evaluate them, select your preferred supplier, notify them of their winning, um, their winning bids and award contracts, and after that, create purchase orders. Um, so the M Supply Tender module can help you through each step of that process um, and it can these are some of the main benefits with the tender module so um, tenders themselves are it's quite a long process as I've already mentioned um, and so there are various ways that you can evaluate them if because um, line by line evaluation which is what the tender module does that is it usually can produce significant cost savings um, and thereby enabling more items to be procured. That's one of the main benefits of using the tender module. Um, alternatively, if without the tender module, you could do that manually, but it would involve a very large spreadsheet. Um, it would require days and months of, of data entry and then um, trying to simplify, simplify different pack sizes and different currencies and trying to figure out which item is the best value for you. So the tender module can assist by making that process simpler. Um, without line by line evaluation, it is possible to, to award tenders to suppliers who might just have the overall lowest bid. Um, but in that case, you might lose, you might not be able to procure as many items or um, save as much money to procure more items. So um, one of the other benefits of the tender module is that suppliers can actually enter their own bids using this, using this function. Um, and that saves you a lot of time in terms of entering the data into your own system. And it also reduces the risk of transcription error, where if you're entering 10 bids for 500 items, 
um, it's very possible as you're re-entering all of that into the system, um, a mistake could occur. And finally, the tender module is really good at keeping things transparent. So once your item list is, your item listing quantities are set, um, you can upload it to the website and then no one in the country, in the procurement unit or suppliers can access anything until the bidding period is closed. So that means, um, so that means, yeah, it's transparent and no one can alter anything once they've been submitted. Now, this one, this email is something that Emily's already shared with you, but I um, just wanted to say that MSupply support will be a great source of strength for you if you are using the the tender module. Um, they help you through the whole process, including including um, liaising with your suppliers, giving them passwords and usernames so they can access the remote tender module um, portal so that they can upload their own upload their own bids. Um, and similarly, if they have any troubles, they can contact and supply support for assistance. So that is a really good um, email to write down if you are going to use the tender module or just for any M supply support needs that you may have. Um, so now I will actually just launch straight into the demonstration unless anyone has any questions. If you do have any questions, you can throw them in the chat. Um, as I go through the demonstration, there is a little bit of back and forth. So feel free to ask any questions at any time. Um, and I'll try to address them if they haven't already been addressed by Emily. I'll try to address them um, at the end of each little section. So just wanting to make sure, can you all see my M Supply screen now? No, we can just see the, the presentation still. Oh, all right, let me stop and start again. Yep, all good. Fantastic. All right, so um, hopefully this is a screen you're all familiar with. It's your M Supply Navigator and the tender module is located under the suppliers tab in the tenders module. So all you have to do is give that a click and you will see a list of any tenders that you've, you've produced previously. Um, only the suggested ones, any finalized ones, you'll actually need to use this little menu here to see which ones are suggested, confirmed or finalized, depending on the status of your tender. Um, if you want, if you've started one and you want to continue working on it, you're welcome to, you just double click here and you can access it. But for this demonstration, we're going to start a tender from scratch. Now, when you start to add items to your tender, there are two ways you can do it using M Supply. Um, one is the generated tender where M Supply is able to um, take into account all your previous usage of your items, taking into account your current stock on hand um, and trying to figure out what items you'll need in what quantities in for the upcoming um, tender period. You can enter all of that information in, but it is very reliant on you having quite robust M Supply um, transaction data. So if you haven't had M Supply for a year or if it hasn't been used to its best capacity, um, it may be better to start a tender from scratch which is how I'll show you how to do it today. Now, so you click on new tender and you will be presented with this screen. Um, this is the main screen where you'll be using, where you'll be um, pretty much using all of, it will help you through the entire tender process. So at the top here, you just need to put a description for your tender and we're just gonna call this one, um, a demo tender for next year. The creation date is the, just the date that you've opened this window. The issue date is the date that you actually want to um, issue this tender out to suppliers and advertise it so that they can respond. So there is a default date of today, but it's editable to whenever you are ready to send it out. Similarly, the response by date and time, that's the deadline by which suppliers need to submit their bids and quotes to you. So again, default to a month from today, however, you can change it. Um, this section here talks about the status of your tender. 
the it will change depending on um, what stage of the tender you're on. And you can see there's suggested. Um, suggested means you're still creating items and changing quantities. Um, once you have finished that and you are ready to send your send your item list and conditions to your suppliers, it will switch to confirmed. Um, and then after you've once you've confirmed it, you're able to enter supplier bids, evaluate responses, award winning tender lines to your suppliers, um, and then you can create purchase orders while in the confirm status. And once you've created your purchase orders, it will become finalized. And that means you can't edit anything else anymore. This little checkbox here, uh, which says lot, is really important, I think. Um, basically, if you lock it, it means no one can accidentally delete your tender or delete lines from your tender. So even though um, M Supply does only allow people with the appropriate permissions to access a tender or create a tender, it's still um, good to just avoid accidentally deleting anything. This is your reference, an area for you to enter your reference code if you have one, and that will appear on any um, tender documentation that you produce from M Supply. So you could just call this oh, an incredibly uncreative reference code I'll enter is DT2022. Um, and this is just a comment for yourselves. It doesn't appear on any documentation, but if you wanted to remind yourself that it was medicines and consumables, you could do that. Uh, next, I will show you the different tabs that are available within the tender module and um, the different tabs that you'll be using throughout the process. So first off, the default is always this items and compare prices tab. So this is where you'll be adding items to your list and where you'll be able to see, um, once we're a bit further through the process, you'll be able to see which supplier you selected, how much it's cost, um, how much it's quoted to cost um, and any other item conditions that you might that you might want to see. The notes, this notes tab is really just for any internal notes that you want to make. Um, it could just be, yeah, anything that you like. The true supplies and enter responses tab, I will go through in detail with you soon. Um, similarly, the standard conditions and purchase order tabs. The reference documents tab allows you to, in case any suppliers actually send you documentation such as pre-qualification documents, um, proof of their business history if you require it, you are able to upload that document within the tender module so that it's not sitting in anyone's um, email where it's inaccessible to everyone else. In this case, anyone who's got access to the to M Supply and to the and has um, permissions to access tenders is able to view those documents if they need to. Uh, I'll show you when you might change things in the tender preferences. And this synchronized tab is, it only appears if you have selected to use the remote tender module. And again, the remote tender module is where you might actually be um, asking suppliers to enter their own bids and um, and then downloading downloading your tender responses. So this only appears if you've got that permission set up, and M Supply Support is able to help you with that if you need if you need them to. The other thing is um, for transparency, there is a log of everything that happens within each tender within the tender. So if you add something, if you add an item, edit a quantity, delete a line. All of that is recorded for um, auditing purposes. So uh, I'll go straight into adding items into your tender. So you start off with this tab uh, just to show you a couple of buttons. The, there is a new line if you want to add a new item and if you've added an item twice or you no longer want it, you can press this delete button. This reports button is helpful towards the end after you've allocated a few, a few lines to suppliers. Um, I'll show you that in a little bit. This INCO term is just something to, it's a procurement term referring to um, the price that is quoted to you by suppliers, whether or not it, it includes um, 
delivery from their country or port to your country or port and whether or not that includes delivery from the port to your warehouse. Um, to be honest, I don't know the definitions of all of them, but I can tell you that CIF is the best one to use when you're doing line by line evaluation because the cost of the item, the insurance and freight, it's all included and it means um, the supplier that you are ordering from is responsible for getting that medicine all the way to your warehouse. So I'm going to set the inco term as CIF. Um, this search bar here is once you've got more than 15 items, it might be really hard to find your items within the list. So you can just use this as a search field as you would anywhere else in M Supply. And this is helpful for showing um, towards the end as well, which, which of your lines have been filled, which items haven't had any bids um, or you haven't selected anyone or where the lowest cost may not have been chosen um, and very possibly for very good reason. So uh, now I'm just going to start adding some items. So you just click on new line and I'm going to go with classic amoxicillin tablets or capsules. Um, so within this screen, this is where you add your item. You just type it in your item name. You select it from that list that popped up. And then within here, you've got a couple, a few tabs here as well. The first one is set to tender item criteria. And this is the only tab you need at this stage. So um, here you enter the number of packs multiplied by the pack size and M Supply will tell you what the total quantity will be. So um, you, you aren't actually limited if you type in a pack size of one and then say you want 100,000 100, tablets, pack size one, um, you can see M Supply will do the math for you. Not that it was too difficult in this instance, but if you were to make that 1,000, um, it would, it would still do the math for you. And it doesn't restrict suppliers at all. They don't need to have a matching pack size. It's just so you know what the total quantity you're ordering is. Um, on the same screen, you have a comments box. So this is just an internal comment box. It doesn't appear to any suppliers, doesn't get printed out on anything. So it's just for yourself if you wanted to say, um, if there was a particular brand you wanted for, or maybe not a brand, you might want, you might want um, suppliers to know that, but any internal comments you can add there. Now this, this little box here, um, which says conditions, are any specific item conditions that you want to apply um, only for this item, not to the whole tender. Um, and it might be something such as blister packs may be preferred. And you can actually have this information printed and sent out to suppliers. But I'll just point out to you now that it doesn't default print out. So what that means is if you do use this, if you do use this section, um, it's really important you do communicate with M Supply Support and they can edit the, the invitation sheet for you to make sure it is included in the, um, in the item list. So you can enter your condition now. And then if you want to continue to add items, you can press OK next. If your tender was just for one item or you just wanted to take a break now, you press OK. So we're just going to keep going um, and adding and add a few more items to the list. So ibuprofen, let's say we want 50,000, pack size of one. And metformin, tablets. Um, let's say, is that 100,000? No, oh, that's 1 million. 100,000, pack size of one. Um, and lastly, I'll do good old paracetamol. I don't know, 100,000 again. 100,000, pack size of one. Um, again, we can say, Worcester packs may be preferred. And now you can see on your screen, um, you've got your item names, the number of packs and pack sizes, and then the total quantity. Uh, all of this will be filled out after you start, after you start um, analyzing bids from your supplier. 
from suppliers and we'll go through the rest of this screen later. So just wanting to check, does anyone have any questions about this part? Also, if you want to edit anything, you can just double click the line and just edit it. Okay. If there are no questions, I'll move on to the next section, which is adding standard conditions to your tender. So you move to this tab called standard conditions, and there are a few things you can do with standard conditions. You can either add um, any tender conditions directly to this tender, and to do that, you would click add new. But if you, uh, if you want, you can actually create a master list of tender conditions so that you can apply the same conditions to every tender from now until whenever. So I think that's probably um, a little better overall. So what you can do is, where did my tender go? What you can do is move to this, go back to this tender window, go to um, and navigate to these tabs where you've got a master conditions list and a master conditions category. So for your master conditions, list. Um, this is what it looks like. And you can also set them up into categories as well if you want. So um, depending on how you want to organize it, you could have categories such as annual for your annual tender. If the tender is actually a standing offer arrangement, you may have different conditions. Um, similarly, if there was a supplementary tender, then you could have that. If you wanted to add a new category, which I don't know if this is a true category or not, but if you wanted to add one, this is how you were to do it. Um, you can just enter emergency and it would come up as a condition category. Now, it's useful to go to your categories first because um, as you are adding your master conditions into your system, you categorize them at each point. So if you've got your categories set up, you don't need to go back and forth between them. So conditions for your tender are really just way sort of parameters by which you, um, how you want the tender to occur. Um, things such as, you know, the language of bids you can document here. So um, you could say that you want all, all bids and communications to occur in English. Um, what in term you would like to be set. What in term you want the suppliers to respond in. So um, I'll show you how to add your master conditions and then how to add them to your actual tender. So to start with, I've already prepared a few to save us a bit of time. Um, but if you wanted to add a new condition, you click new condition here and you'll see um, point, heading and body. The point really just refers to the order in which you want your conditions to be printed when you do when you're up to that stage. So um, I made it up to 3.2 here. So I'll add a a third point under um, number three, and we'll say expiry for my heading. The body is really just further information that you can elaborate under. So for example, all items must be delivered to the National Demo Land Warehouse with a minimum, whoops, can't spell, sorry, minimum expiry of, let's say 18 months. Um, you can add that in a, in a category. So when you do that, when you add all of the annual um, conditions lists into your tender, everything will pop up. You can also use flags where um, when you're looking at your master conditions, you can identify if anything has dates in it that may need to be amended later. So I don't really need to add any dates or flag this as anything. So I'll just press OK. But as you can see, um, for everything else, you can see some of them have flags to say you might need to change the dates that are listed in here. All right. Oh, good. My tender is back. So now that you've added your, um, added your latest condition, if this is everything that you want to do, you go back to your tender and you open it up, move towards your standard conditions tab, and you can just click copy from master. So if you have used categories, they'll appear here, but if you haven't, it will just be none and you just press okay. So I'm gonna go with my annual tender category um, conditions, click okay, and you can see everything comes up here. 
forgive me, I did forget to mention um, this active box, you need to ensure it is ticked. If it's not ticked, it won't come up if you, even if it's within that category. So as long as it's a relevant condition, you can just keep it there. Um, oops, sorry. And that's how you delete one. Uh, so now that you've added your standard conditions, oh, sorry, does anyone have any questions at this point? And I can't see the chat, so Emily, I'm relying on you if anyone has any questions. But if not, I will continue. All right. Um, at this stage, after you've sorted your items and your standard conditions, it's now time to um, invite suppliers to your tender. Now, every country does this a little bit differently. Some, some countries choose to just, they know which supplies they're going to advertise to. It's just the ones that they are familiar with. Um, meanwhile, other countries may advertise openly on a government website and any supplier who's um, looking for business might find it and be able to bid for it. So the way that this is designed at the moment, um, you usually need to add your supplier now, the ones that you know will will at least um, make a bid. But I have spoken to M Supply Support and they said that it's quite easy for, if you wanted to just advertise them on a government website, um, as long as they have enough notice, they can then set up access for that, that supplier that you did not foresee was going to bid on your tender. Um, they can organize access for them so that they can, they can enter their bid remotely. So um, at this stage, you would just add any suppliers that you think might bid on your tender. So I'm going to select these ones, Archie, Azul, Montana and Monty. And now they have been added to, to your list. At this point, you can actually print invitations to them um, and that includes the conditions as well as the item list. So you would just select a supplier, click print invitation, and there are a few forms to use, but the two that make the most sense at the moment are the tender conditions, sorry, the tender invitation condition and the tender invitation itself. So I'll show you what they both look like. Um, the tender invitation condition is the list of your conditions. So you can send that to your, you can send that to um, your suppliers. So this is what it looks like. You've got your introduction, bid period, bid validity. Oh, and sorry, Ellie, we, we can't see the, the form. Oh, shivers, sorry, thanks. <laughs> Let's see, share my screen. And do you see it now? Yep, thanks. Thank you. Thanks, Emily. Um, so you can see the list of all of your standard conditions um, has been set. Similarly, if you want to print an invitation um, with all of the item lists, you go to tender invitation and this is what it will look like. So you can see it's it's directed towards the actual supplier. Um, you can see the items, the quantities, suggested pack size um, units and the total quantity that has been requested. Again, that can, specific item conditions um, have, hasn't been printed but can be easily fixed. So um, at this stage, you can then email these to your supplier. And just checking, you can see my M Supply screen again now? Yes. Thank you. Um, you can email this to your supplier just directly from your email or even through um, M Supply. But if you need this, the M Supply support team will need to just set up an, a separate email server for you. But you can actually do it through through M Supply um, directly. If you didn't want to actually use the remote tender module, though, I highly recommend you do to save you the headache of of um, entering all the data in yourself, you can, you can click to spreadsheet and it will actually print out everything for you. Um, again, item name, number of packs, pack size, and it can, it's got a sort of default, default level of information that you want from suppliers to fill out. Um, so you have that option as well. 
at this stage, if you're using the remote tender module, you let MSupply know that you're ready, and then you would click this upload tender to website button, uh, which would then turn the status into confirmed, and it means you can't make any more edits. Now, let's say a month has passed and you, it's now the 9th of December and everyone has submitted the bids. You would then click download tender from website and it would pre-populate your system um, with all of the supplier quotes. Now, because I don't have access to that at the moment, I'm going to show you how to manually enter quotes as well. Uh, so you go back to choose supplies and enter responses and you click on the, the supplier that you'd like to um, enter the bid from, bid for. Let's say they, they sent it on the 10th of, oh, she was, sorry. The 10th of the 12th of this year. Oh no, sorry, this is the date that we sent it, I apologize. Um, and the date that they responded would be, let's say the 8th of the 12th of this year. And they said we had until the 1st of January uh, to respond to them. So that just tells you um, when, how long the bid will be valid until because prices are sometimes always in flux depending on what's happening around the world. Now here, if you want to add, add their quote, you just need to click new line and you can see all of the items that you put to tender um, are here. You can just add all of them if they've submitted a quote for all of your items. If they haven't, you can, you can opt. You can just select the ones that they have done. So you can enter all of them and now they're, they're in your quotes, quotes window. And to enter, the, enter their quotes, you just double click on a line. It will tell you it's relating to this demo tender 2022. Um, the item is amoxicillin and the supplier is Archie Distribution. So here you can enter the price and pack size that they've quoted you. So um, I'm just going to make these up. So let's say they said it would be $2 for a pack of 100. The currency is AUD, but if they, if they did, um, if you hadn't asked for everything to be in a particular currency and they wanted to quote you in, in another currency, M-Supply can actually um, help you with that and do currency conversions as well. Um, that requires a little bit of fiddling around with currencies, but it's it can do it. So um, here, if the supplier has added any comments for you, it should pre-populate, but if not, you could always say list of packs. Um, and that's so that they can tell you, it might be a point of difference where you, even if they may not be the cheapest supplier, you might choose them because it's worth it to have it available in the blister pack. This price break quantity section um, is just an area for you to note where if a supplier says you buy more than 50,000 tablets, I'll give you a discount. Um, and then you can say what the percentage discount is and what the quantity is. Just so you know, this doesn't get taken into account with any calculations on M Supply. It's just something for you to bear in mind um, that might possibly impact your decision. This section here is freight. If anyone were to tell you um, the actual size of everything, you could make that, you could enter that information here as well. Um, and if the supplier wants to, they can, they can enter their code or barcode and tell you delivery time and the expiry date of the product. So uh, that's how you enter, enter information into this screen. I'll just quickly make up the rest. So ibuprofen will say it's $4 for 100, um, no comment, we'll say metformin is $15 for 500. Let's say this one expires June of 2022. Uh, paracetamol is $2 for 200. And now you've entered in all of your quotes. So you've got the pack size and the price and then you click OK. Um, and you can see that the total bid for Archie distribution for your tender is $8,000. This tender value column is after you've awarded 
any winning lines to your suppliers, um, it will tell much you've it will tell you how much you've actually awarded them. So I'll just oh, sorry quickly enter in the rest of this information. So the date that we sent it was today. And say they were super fast, they responded the day after. And they're also um, allowing us to, to, until the 1st of January to decide. Again, add all of your items and the price per pack. So $20 for 500. Uh, let's see, $2 for 30. We'll say they decided to give you a price, but a price for each individual tablet and $20 for a thousand. So we've done Azul. You can see the total bid is $14,333. Um, I'm going to ignore this right now because just for time purposes. Um, I'm broken $2 for 20. Let's say $5 for a pack of 90 and $2 for a pack of 100. Okay, and one more. So. Mm -hmm. And two dollars, three dollars, let's make it an outrageous price, three dollars for a pack of 20. So you hit OK. And now you can actually see, um, you can see what their total bid for each, each company was. And we've got the lowest one would be $8,000 for Archie Distribution. Azul has bid $14,000, $22,000 for Monty and $34,000 for Montana. Now, um, now that you've got the suppliers who've entered their responses, you can actually compare prices in this tab. So to see what each supplier has actually bid for each item, you just double click on that line and you'll see that you've moved to the Compare Supplier Responses tab. So here you can see um, it's got all of your suppliers, what the price is and with what currency they quoted you, quoted you in, um, what the pack size is, and this is local cost in case there had to be any currency conversions. And this is the adjusted cost. So the adjusted cost is where it, um, it puts everything onto one even playing field in terms of um, currency and pack size, it's all brought to a common common denominator. So it will, this adjusted cost is $2 and you can see um, what it means is it's, the adjusted cost is based off your default pack size in your M supply system. So it's $2 for 100 and it was $20 for 500 with Azul. And so it's just, um, it's saying it will be $4 for every pack size of 100. So um, it will then identify which one is the cheapest one for you and highlight that in blue. So at this stage, normally you'd be together with your procurement team, any other specialists um, or anyone else involved, and you'd be going through all of the bids together and finding out um, what is the best value. So it's not always about money, although that is definitely something that needs to be taken into consideration. It could also be um, to do with pack sizes, that supplier, what the lead or delivery times might be. They all need to be taken into consideration when you're um, awarding, awarding a tender line. So in this instance, we wanted blister facts and um, Archie has offered it to us and also at the best price. So we can select them as your preferred supplier and move on to the next item. If you want to make any notes, so let's say um, if you wanted to confirm something, you could make a note here. Confirm with Archie delivery time is acceptable, just to help you remember. Uh, just so you know, something else which is up and coming is this benchmark area where um, one of our colleagues is working on a international drug price indicator guide and it will just sort of 
tell you roughly what, um, what an appropriate benchmark price might be just to save you from um, severely overpaying or if there is uh, something that seems like a really cheap price, it might make you question this is this maybe is not a correct quote. So that's coming, um, but I don't have a deadline for you at this stage about when that might come, but it might help you analyse um, analyze your tender. So we can go, okay, and next, uh, ibuprofen. Archie looks like it is the cheapest one at this stage. So, and there's nothing else to help us differentiate between them. So you can select Archie again. Uh, in this instance, you can see Archie is again the cheapest. I don't think I did a very good job when I was making up prices, um, but Archie is the cheapest but you can see that their medicines will expire June 2022. So if you weren't expecting a delivery to arrive until say February or March of 2022, that may not be appropriate for you to select. So you can move down to the next one for Azul Medica um, and select them. You can disqualify Archie just because that's not appropriate given the early expiry date. I did a terrible job, it's all Archie. So um, in this case, again, Archie is the cheapest, but just so I can show you some differences in purchase orders, I am going to give this one to Monty Meds. Um, all right. No one said they had blister packs, okay. So uh, as you can see, oh, you know what, I apologize. I'm going to switch back to Archie just for the purposes of showing you the cost saving first. Um, so we've gone back to Archie and we will go to, you can now see um, who, you, who your preferred supplier is, any item conditions that you've asked for, um, any comments that you yourself have made, and that may all need to be taken into account when you're analysing it. Uh, now you go to your suppliers and you can see that Archie, we have actually um, awarded $5,000 worth of your tender to and $5,000 to Azul. Now, I apologize because my numbers weren't very good this time around, but ordinarily with line by line evaluation, you're actually able to see a cost saving when you, um, if your total bids are anywhere from you can usually make a reduction in cost, which we weren't able to win this time because I accidentally gave Archie Distribution all the cheapest, um, the cheapest lines. But if that were not the case, and it normally isn't, then you can see some cost savings here. So at this stage, after you have awarded your, um, after you have awarded your, or you've selected your preferred supplier, now it's time to actually award contracts and notify the suppliers. So um, at this stage, you would then go towards standard conditions, suppliers. Okay, so um, here, if you want to print out some awarded documentation for everyone, um, you can come here and go to you can select whether you want your tender conditions to be printed with an acceptance letter, but you basically start to create your purchase orders in the purchase order tab. Um, and at this stage, after you've created your purchase orders within the tender module, you can print an acceptance letter to each supplier. So let's say you, if you want to do a single delivery purchase order, you don't need to make any changes here. But if you do want to do split deliveries, you'll need to come to this tender preferences tab and select create split deliveries. After you do this, you can't just navigate through the tabs, otherwise it won't work. You need to press okay, and then go back into your tender because I have run into that issue before. Um, and it didn't save. Normally you can press okay and yes, there it is. That will change your purchase order to create blank purchase orders um, and you can add your suppliers um, the same number of times that you are expecting a delivery from them. So for time purposes, I am just going to do a single 
I'm just going to do a single delivery, but you do have that option as well. So the other thing to note is when you are creating your purchase order, uh, there is a calculation method where M Supply can can just distribute the tender quantity evenly, which is based on um, the, the quantities that you, you chose at the very beginning, or it can recalculate your purchase order quantity according to usage. So because this process normally takes a few months, um, you may have used even more, even more um, medicines at this stage and you might want to increase your order quantity. But for our purposes, we just want to keep the items the same and we're going to do a single purchase order. So now you come to your purchase order tab, you'll hit create purchase order. And then you'll see that for each supplier that you awarded a line to, um, you can see the purchase order has been, has been made and the status is actually a status you're probably not too familiar with if you've never used a tender module before. It means the TN stands for tender, saying um, it's only in the tender module. It hasn't yet flowed through to the rest of your M supply system. Tells you how much is in the total purchase order and in what currency. So now you can actually print an acceptance letter for each supplier. And you can use this as part of your, um, you know, telling them these are the lines we've awarded you um, and this is the contract we'd like to send you. So uh, you can see Archie won three out of the four lines and you can see the each item name, the quantity, the total price, uh, the pack size, and this is cut off a little bit, but you it tells you what the total quantity is that you will be, or that the supplier will be supplying. Um, you can get M Supply support to again change the the format of this of this acceptance letter to make sure the quantity is not cut off. Um, they can give you what the total value will be as well, and anything else that you need, they are able to help you with that. So once you've printed off your acceptance letters, sent it to everyone, um, and if the suppliers agree and everything is okay then you can actually convert these purchase orders into um, a suggested purchase order. So when you convert to a suggested purchase order, that's when the um, items and the management of your purchase order comes out of your tender module and goes into your, the rest of your M supply system. So let's say that they've agreed with everything. We can select a line and convert to suggested. And here it will tell you that you change the status um, and you'll only be able to edit it from the purchase order module. So you say yes, and now the status is suggested, and similarly, we'll do the same thing for Azul. Um, and you can see the status has been finalized. You click OK, yes, um, and then it should be here in your purchase orders. So you can see today's date, we've got Archie distribution, and um, a purchase order for Archie and it tells you um, how much you are actually, what you are ordering, how much and when. So you can make all of your edits from this screen. And I think that is, oh, again, if you want to see, see your finalized tender, you'll just have to change the setting there. And um, you can, ooh, sorry, you can go back and review anything that you need to. Did forget to show you that you can print your report so you can see where um, any suppliers who won like who you've awarded each one to tender lines where the lowest price wasn't chosen um, and that you can use that to help you evaluate further down the track if you need to make more cuts because of budget or for whatever reason so you can that's a really handy option as well um, and that's sort of a really quick demonstration on the tender module. Does anyone have any questions or would like me to go over anything? We have another five minutes, I just don't want to run over time. Um, <laughs> the poll? I, I just have a question. Yes. Regarding the 
um, the, the web page that you just opened, the preview page. Yes. Um, could you just open the, the, the yeah, that one. Uh, the yes. 10 to 16, 10 to 16. 10 to, uh, this one? Yes. This one? Okay, yeah. yeah. Um, just making sure. So the response required by the date that you can change from M supply at the date. Um, so if we go back to M supply, mm -hmm. that date responds by date, that one. Yes. Okay. Thank okay. You. Yeah. Yes, you can change that. Um, yes. We did notice, as I was working through this with someone yesterday, we did notice when you are trying to award purchase orders and print out that acceptance letter. Unfortunately, at the moment, the issue date and response by date are the same. Um, so that is something that we can edit within and somewhere else. I've, we've asked him supply support for a bit of help there. Um, but otherwise, I think you can still edit it at each stage, but it's not as user friendly, I suppose, because if you forget, then it might, might print out with the wrong date. Um, but we are working on that. We've got a couple of questions come through the chat, Yoli. So one from Andrew in Cook Islands. Um, are differences in currency accounted for automatically? Yeah, so in order to change your currency um, or to make sure it's updated, it will do it automatically, but the, the tender module will do it automatically after you've set it up to do so. So um, in order to access your currencies, you just need to come to your special screen, check your currencies here. Um, if you can see here, you've got any currencies that you want. If you wanted to add another one, I'm not sure what currency this is, but, oh, okay. I have to add a code. Let's not add another one. Um, so you've got AUD and USD. You've got your M supply rate, and then you've got um, the internet rate. So obviously we're not at parity. Uh, so you can just click get internet rates. They retrieve them from, I think, is it Yahoo? And then you've got your internet rate here. You then just need to update your M supply rate. And once you've done that, um, anything within the tender module should automatically, should automatically convert. Sometimes it takes a little bit of saying, okay, and going into it again, because it might not happen immediately. But um, my experience has been that it, it will change. So that's how you address the currencies issue. Uh, anyone else? Yeah, oh, that one your... just checking. <laughs> it's right, sure. Andrew, was that, did that answer your question? Yeah, that's great, thank you. Thanks. Thanks. And one more question in the chat from Ash. The st standard conditions are not automatically sent with the tender to the suppliers. Can this be fixed? Um, I believe so. Do you, once it's been added into your, or do you mean having the conditions and items all in one document rather than having to submit two? Um, if no, so when I put the standard conditions together and it gets updated, uh, uploaded to the um, tender module, that get the web tender, the uh, suppliers don't see the standard conditions. So for us to give them standard conditions, we need to email it to them. Yes, yes, you do still need to email it to them. Um, I'm not sure whether M Supply have any plans on uploading all of that onto the remote tender website that the suppliers use. At the moment, it is still about um, emailing them the, the invitation with the items as well as the conditions separately. Um, it's something we can ask M Supply, but unfortunately, I, I don't know how to answer that right now. I'm not sure if they're making any changes to, to the module. Okay, thank you. No worries. Oh, I would also say though, Ash, if you are using the remote tender module, um, if you do use any of those conditions, that specific item condition, that also doesn't come up on the supplier side of things. And so if there were any specifics that you wanted them to see, again, you'd need to email them the invitation list. Yeah, okay, thank you. Thanks. That's all the questions in the chat, I believe. Um, last chance for any other questions. Otherwise, we might finish it off there. So 
Thank you, Yolanda, for that uh, excellent demo. Thanks to everyone for the questions as well. Um, thanks for those of you who have answered the poll too. That's um, really helpful information. Um, and thank you everyone for joining once again. Um, this webinar has been recorded, so we'll, we'll publish that as well if you'd like to look at that process again uh, in the future. So thanks everyone for joining us. Goodbye. Thank you, bye. Thank you. Thank you.